Hello, my beautiful people. Welcome to yet another episode of Dear Cheekies. I am Cheekies and I am here to answer your questions. So how this works, if you guys still don't know, this is your first time watching, you guys leave me questions about anything and everything and I answer them from like the best of my ability. So that's basically how it works. So let's get this episode started. The first question comes from Omar. Hi, Cheekies. I am a huge fan of you, of your mother. Since Cheekies and Roxy, I was like 11 or 12 at the time. And I remember mm -hmm. just loving you guys. And I still currently do. I am now 25. So te imaginas the amount of love I have for the both of you. Poderosas, mm. empowering women. I love you guys that much. But my first question, girl, is, si me puedes ayudar, how do I go about becoming an artista? I know there's a lot of self-promoting involved, um, but there's also a lot more to it. Who do I go to? Who do I pay? What do I do? Um, that's my first question. The next one would be, would you see Chiki signing her own artist in the future? Um, sacando a artistas adelante. If so, you have a prototype right here. His name is Omar. <laughs> But if not, it's cool. I get it. Cute. But yeah, that advice would really help me, Chiquis. Thank you. Oh, you're so cute, Omar. Thank you so much. I love your question. Um, I actually have Sweet Sound Records, and I'm trying to convince Johnny to let me sign him. So you never know. Maybe you'll be the next artist. Um, and thank you for watching me on um, I Love Jenny and Chiquis and Roxy. That means a lot to me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, okay, so here's the thing. Now with social media, it makes things so much easier, you guys. So you have to put yourself out there. YouTube, Instagram, TikTok is huge. TikTok, especially using the right hashtags, you guys, that'll help you a lot, Omar. And finding yourself a good publicist. I think that was the first thing to do. Obviously, someone to manage you, someone that you trust. Um, I can give you advice on that later on. Once you have found someone, I'll tell you exactly what you need to ask and what you need to carve out. Or having your contract, because it's very important, okay? A good lawyer as well that's going to review your contracts, you guys. Please, I learned my lesson the hard way. So anyways, going back to that, a publicist. Because a publicist, I think, is a great investment, especially when you're starting out. Because they're going to be able to put you everywhere. You need an entertainment publicist, okay? Remember that. And yeah, just post a bunch of videos. I mean, a lot of these new artists are being discovered on TikTok. So put yourself out there. Be willing. And you sound very handsome, so I don't know. That's you got that going for you. I don't know what you look like. But anyways, um, but yes, put yourself out there. Put up put up a video. And if you can tag me, I'd love to hear um, what you sound like and what you sing. And yeah, so that is my advice. Omar, thank you so much for your question. I really appreciate it. Now we're going to move on to the next question from Christine. Hi, Chiki. Um, I'm reaching out because I need help in figuring out how to go about this. Um, I've been dealing with toxic family members for a long time. Now that I'm an adult and, um, and I have a daughter, I'm like trying to heal and have more of a positive and loving and caring environment for her. She's only a year old, almost two. And I just realized like it's time to stop pretending or stop letting them you know be this way and and have this hold on our family in general like i want to step away respectfully leave the i guess leave the door open for possible reconciliation but for now i don't want to give in anymore i don't want to give in to their toxic behavior their disrespect and their selfishness so you know what can i do or how can i go about this thank you so much Ooh. Christine, you are preaching to the choir, girl. Um, uh, it's it's tough. It's tough because it's family and we love them. But I say this a lot on the podcast, you guys, that if someone is not good for your soul, if someone's causing you more pain than good, it is okay for you to set boundaries. Boundaries are healthy. And um, it's okay to love people from afar. Don't feel guilty about that. You are protecting your daughter now and you want the best for her and you want to break generational curses, which I get because I felt I needed to do that for my little family, my siblings and their kids. Um, it's not to say that they won't change. It's good that you keep, you're keeping that door open for the possibility of, you know, reconciliation. But for now, if you feel this way, it's okay for you, like I said, for you to love them from afar and wish them the best 
And if they need something one day, then you can go ahead and do it. Look at the NASCAR. You have to go with what feels right in your heart. Um, but you don't have to make it or try to make it work because they're your family. Because we were taught blood is thicker than water. And sometimes we create this false narrative in our mind that, well, we have to put up with everything because that's our family. That's our grandma. That's our uncle. That's our cousin. That's, And even with parents, sometimes um, you have to create boundaries. That's being respectful to yourself and being good, a good steward of what God has given you. And you have a daughter that you're trying to protect. So that is my advice. Um, I hope it works out and I hope that they realize what they're losing and once you've you know once they see that space between that you that you're creating uh between you and the other person or the other people that they appreciate and value who you are and they change i'm hoping that's what i'm hoping so thank you so much for your question and i hope it works out i'm gonna send you a big big hug because i know i know girl i feel you our next question comes from cass Hi, Cheekies. Love your podcast. I recently started watching it because I would watch your sister's podcast. And, you know, you mentioned on, you had mentioned on there that you had one as well. And I really like your podcast as well. And I guess I want some advice on podcasts. I started mine recently um, and I am tracking our journey, my husband's and I's journey, because he recently got deported and I... I also made the move to Mexico because I didn't want to be in the United States without him. And I wanted to track our journey, but I didn't want the podcast only to be about that. Um, you know, I wanted it to be a space for me, a space where I can talk about anything I want to, you know, la comunidad latina and all of that. And I recently had a conversation with somebody and they kind of were telling me that they didn't understand why I named the podcast the way I did. And for me, it was something meaningful related to, you know, the situation that I am now, I am in now. And they were just like, I don't understand why you named it if it's not just going to be about that. And I felt kind of like it wasn't really much of a support. It was kind of more bringing me down, you know. And I feel like, you know, all podcasts don't really relate to what the name is about and I just you know I want some advice on how to deal with stuff like that or and as well as you know being consistent on your podcast growing the podcast and making it a better podcast for myself and working on it Cass you forgot to tell me the name of your podcast I wish I I, I knew so I can give you a little bit more advice on that but regardless it doesn't matter what the name of your podcast is and it what anyone else thinks at the end of the day, it's what is coming out of your heart and what you're trying to do, not only for yourself and for your relationship, but also to help other people. So don't worry too much about what that person said or, or you know, you didn't feel that it was they were being supportive. Um, yeah, at the end of the day, just know that it'll grow slowly, maybe, but surely don't worry if like right now you don't have a lot of listeners or maybe you do. That's awesome. I'm just saying like, don't worry much. Don't worry too much about that, about numbers. I think in the society that we live in right now, we worry so much about numbers. And I'm telling you, because sometimes it does affect me until I remember. I'm like, OK, if one person is watching, if one person is listening, if five people are going to go to my show, those five people are meant to be there and I'm going to give them the best of me. So as long as what you're doing is coming from your heart and for the right reasons, don't worry about anything else. And I think the best thing right now, podcasting is like huge and it's so fun. So congratulations on that, by the way. Um, just keep at it, you know, and make sure you're staying true to yourself and putting it out there. I mean, YouTube is a great place as well to to promote it. And, and you know, we have all these different platforms. So just be patient and um, and always be willing to talk about things that people aren't willing to talk about. Like a podcast is where you can be transparent. It's your platform. It's your way for people to hear you and to change the world. So I hope everything goes well. And don't worry about the naysayers, girl. No te preocupes por lo que digan o no digan. Like, just stay focused. Focused. Okay, guys? That goes for all of us. All right, Cass, thank you so much for your question, and I'm wishing you all the best. Next time, tell me, please, tell me the name of your podcast. Our next question comes from an anonymous listener. Hi, Cheekies. Um, I just had a question for you. I wanted to say first that I admire 
everything you do and your strength to keep going forward after everything you've been through is amazing. Um, I was just wondering if you have any advice. I don't know if you ever dealt with nobody, like, fam family members not believing your abuse. And if you did, how did you go on without, like, with them not believing you? Um, or if you didn't, if you have any advice on how to keep going forward when certain family members don't believe the abuse that happened to you. Um, that's the advice I wanted on. And I just had one more thing. It's just a question for you. Do you ever plan on trying to buy your mom's old house? Hi, anonymous listener. I understand why you probably didn't leave your name and that's fine. Let me start backwards. I'm going to answer your question in regards to my mom's house. I get that question a lot. I would love to one day. Now it's millions and millions of dollars. Um, I think that it would be awesome. If I could, I would. But then I'm like, do I really want to live in that house without my mom? I thought about that too. And I'm like, I don't know. Something I got to pray about because I don't know. I think it'd be hard for not only me, but all my siblings. You know what I mean? Um, so now going to your initial question. Um, yes, there are people that didn't believe me and probably still don't believe me till this day about my abuse. Um, especially like my dad's side of the family, which to be honest, I understand, you know, because that's his family and they're going to have his back. Um, and I'm not upset about it anymore. If anything, I still, I actually now talk to some of my, my dad's family. Um, another one is my grandpa's, <laughs> my grandpa's sister. She didn't believe me and said a lot of things and that really hurt me I was like what the heck but you know what I I started understanding that there are going to be people that are not going to believe a lot of things and as long as I know in my heart what the truth is and I forgive the person I think more than anything it's you forgiving the person I know it's and I'm Sure, I think you're asking about for yourself, I think. Um, but if not, I think it's just forgiving the person and people that don't believe you, like, you just got to let it be and probably stay away from those people. And I don't know who the people are, but it's painful. And I think it's just going to take time to heal that wound. And you're going to have to be okay with just putting up a, a wall and a shield of, you know what, I'm going to protect my heart, my mind and my body and if these people don't believe me it's maybe they have issues that they're working through I don't know but it's okay for you to stay away because you still have you're going through your healing process it's something that's going to take a while so I hope that helps um it's really tough because I wish I had more to tell you but it, it, it I understand it it can be very painful but stay away from those people People that love you. That's one thing I thank my mom for, that she never questioned me. She believed me and had my back. And that feels good. Stay close to the people that have your back and believe you, you know. So I'm wishing you all the best. Um, you guys, thank you so much for listening to another episode of Dear Cheekies and watching as well. Now we have a set and it's so beautiful and I'm so happy. So thank you guys for listening and watching. And I will catch you on the next episode of Dear Cheekies. If you guys have any questions, concerns about anything and everything, I am willing to answer. Um, even if they're kind of weird questions, they're not necessarily weird, but I don't know. Just anything, honestly. Leave your question at speakpipe.com slash cheekies and chill podcast, okay? Los quiero mucho y nos vemos en la próxima. This is a production of iHeartRadio and My Cultura Podcast Network. Follow us on Instagram at My Cultura Podcasts and follow me, Chiquis, that's C-H-I-Q-U-I-S. For more podcasts from iHeart, visit the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your favorite shows.